Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a discovery of a very unusual and somewhat difficult to explain exoplanet that was recently described in this paper that you can find in the description below and seems to be right at that limit where we can still define something as a planet, although even here it's pushing a lot of boundaries. And so in this video we're going to be discussing some of the details of this discovery and also how all of this relates to a lot of other unusual planets discovered in the last few years and I guess to some extent also our understanding of what a planet actually is. And I guess maybe we should start with that. So what is a planet? Well, according to modern definition, that was officially redefined when Pluto lost its status, and also according to ChatGPT, it's an object that seems to orbit around a star, it's big and massive enough to turn into a sphere, and it has enough gravity to remove any similar objects from its own orbit. Now in one of the previous videos that you can find in the description, I discussed how some scientists, and actually quite a lot of scientists, have a problem with this definition. Mostly because a lot of these principles almost border on astrology, not really astronomy. You can learn more about this in that video that should be below. And so a lot of planetary scientists usually try to focus on properties of these objects as opposed to where they orbit and how they orbit. And one specific part of the definition that almost everyone agrees with is actually in regards to the mass required for this object to acquire spherical shape. Or basically, if an object has a certain minimal mass, depending on what's inside the object, it will then start becoming spherical, turning into something like this. But a lot of definitions today also involve geological status. For something to be a planet, it also has to have some kind of a geological activity on the inside. This can be either volcanic activity, it can also be some kind of an interaction of the crust of this object with something else around it, or some other activity that basically makes this object not just a typical rock or a typical asteroid, but an active dynamic object that changes in time. But depending on what's inside the object, the minimal mass can be quite different. But what about the maximum mass? Well, here things get a little bit less controversial, with a lot more scientists agreeing on when the planets stop being planets and become something else entirely. In this case, once an object reaches a certain mass, it then turns into a slightly different object referred to as a brown dwarf. Still kind of resembling a planet, but possessing very different properties properties that are different from both stars and planets. And the main property in this case is the type of fusion that these objects acquire. And so today it's believed that once an object acquires approximately 13 Jupiter masses, it becomes massive enough to squeeze a lot of the stuff on the inside and begin a type of fusion referred to as deuterium fusion, using a slightly heavier isotope of hydrogen. And this is exactly what the modern fusion experiments are trying to achieve as well. They're essentially trying to use deuterium to create artificial fusion right here on Earth and to then turn it into some kind of a clean energy. But that's beside the point. The point here is that this is what happens in brown dwarfs as soon as they reach certain mass. And as a result they also start changing their properties as they acquire even more mass. They begin as something very similar to what you see right here. This is a white type dwarf becoming slightly brighter and slightly more powerful as they acquire even more mass. This is a T-dwarf, eventually becoming L-dwarfs, and at this point this is where things get kind of hazy as well. Some of them start also fusing lithium, becoming even brighter and more powerful, but in some cases, depending on certain conditions and depending on what's inside, they can officially become a star or an M-type dwarf once they get approximately 80 to 85 Jupiter masses. And that's when all of the hydrogen that they've been collecting over time starts fusing on the inside and basically initiates the fusion reaction, turning them into actual stars. But what's really intriguing about brown dwarfs compared to exoplanets, and specifically compared to, for example, gas giants, is really the way that they actually change as they acquire more mass. A planet like Jupiter would actually increase in size and will potentially even decrease in density as it grows in size. Or basically, if you take Jupiter and you suddenly give it another Jupiter, or you combine two, making this a planet of approximately two Jupiter masses, it will very likely grow in size, but also potentially decrease in density. This has actually been observed around other star systems, where the scientists have discovered what they refer to as poofy planets. For example, planets like Corot 1b, believed to be these expanded Jupiter-like planets, with densities much lower than Jupiter itself. And this can actually go on for quite a while, depending on, I guess, a lot of things like proximity to the star, and also the total mass of the object. The scientists have even discovered objects referred to as super puffs, such as three unusual planets in the Kepler-51 system, with densities close to about 0.1 gram per centimeter cube. That's about 55 times less density than planet Earth, 
or about seven times lower than the density of the least dense planet in the solar system, Saturn. And though it's unknown why this is so and why these planets tend to expand so much, for example this one here is not even that hot, the temperatures here could be potentially even similar to planet Earth, it does seem to happen to certain planets. And by the way, in the previous video that you can find in the description, a team of scientists has speculated that maybe these are not planets at all, maybe some of these unusual in density objects are actually really large chunks of dark matter. If you'd like to learn more, check out that video in the description. But that's beside the point. The point is that, in a lot of cases, as planets acquire more mass, they tend to, for some reason, increase in size and they also tend to decrease in density. But that's not really the case with all of the planets. For example, out of many, many Kepler discoveries in the last few years, there's actually one that really stands out. It's the one right here, Kepler 131c, a planet that seems to contain extreme density, assuming that the calculations are correct. It was even implied to be at least 10 times more than planet Earth. What exactly this planet is made from and why it's so dense is of course unknown. But so far, all of these super dense planets have mostly been either much smaller in size or basically have been predominantly terrestrial whereas the majority of really low-density planets have all been gas giants. But that's until now. The new study seems to have discovered a planet that's kind of very difficult to explain. It's very massive, but also extremely dense. Located in a star system known as Toy 4603, approximately 730 light-years away from us, orbiting an F-type star, slightly more massive and slightly hotter than our Sun. But in this case, orbiting really close to that star, a single orbit here is about 7.2 days. And because this is a gas giant, it's sort of expected to be what's known as the hot Jupiter, many of which have been discovered in the last decade. But all of these planets generally have similar properties. Lower density, very hot temperature, and generally pretty big size as well. Along with some other extreme properties, such as unusual types of rain, including metal rain, and extremely powerful winds, with some of these planets being as hot as some of the smaller stars. At least that's what's generally expected from these unusual objects. Once again, this object, this newly discovered planet, seems to be a very big exception. Now, the original detection was done using the transit method, so in this case the scientists were able to determine the size of this planet. It seems to be very similar to Jupiter, so far nothing unusual. But then they also used what's known as radial velocity that allowed the scientists to see how much this planet pulls at the star in order to then determine its mass. And this is when things got more interesting they discovered that it has a mass of about 13 Jupiters, or almost 13, 12.8 or something, which basically puts it at that limit when it should be a brown dwarf. But the actual mystery comes from the calculations for density, because we know the size and the mass, the scientists can then calculate density, and the density in this case is about 3 times higher than planet Earth, 9 times higher than Jupiter, and even higher than certain metals such as lead. Implying that this planet, instead of expanding like a lot of other gas giants, started to become more compact, similar to I guess a typical brown dwarf. Ok, so maybe it is a brown dwarf then. Maybe this is not a planet at all. So basically, maybe this is an object that has now begun its deuterium fusion, decreasing in size over time, and thus increasing in density. But the thing about brown dwarfs is that their origin is believed to be extremely similar to stars. They all start from some kind of a primordial cloud, collapse into something a little bit more dense, eventually create an accretion disk around themselves, start producing a lot of emissions, eventually becoming what the scientists refer to as failed stars. And so in the past, all of the brown dwarfs have always been discovered really far away from star partners, or completely by themselves. Or in other words, in some systems, this is a very similar formation history as in a typical binary star system. But in some cases, when the original cloud is much smaller, they basically create a much smaller object that did not become a star. Now this right here shows us a kind of a visualization of all of the brown dwarfs discovered in the last few years, within about 65 light years away from the sun. And in every single case here, either this was a single object, or the separation between the star and the brown dwarf was at least 5 astronomical units. None of the objects were ever much closer. So a brown dwarf with a close orbit has never really been found. And so the question is of course, could this be the first? Or is this something just entirely different? And is this just a planet that we kind of don't understand? Now one thing that this is probably not is the hypothetical dark matter planet as described in the video in the description below. And that's because we have optical observations of this planet from the test telescope, suggesting that it actually is a physical object. Very similar in size to Jupiter. But what sort of an object, that's of course a question we cannot answer. First of all, it's probably really hot because of the proximity to the star. 
But its density of about 14.7 grams per centimeter cube, that's really the main problem. It makes it kind of difficult to imagine or explain this right now, because we don't really have anything similar in a solar system, and we've never seen these objects in any other star system either. And so in some sense, maybe this is that object that's in a transition stage, right between an exoplanet and a brown dwarf, which could help the scientists finally understand how various brown dwarfs and also various very massive gas giants form, evolve, and influence star systems that they usually find themselves in. Although at least one explanation to what's possibly happening here has already been provided based on another paper. There might be a second object around the star that is an actual brown dwarf, at least 20 masses of Jupiter. It seems to be orbiting slightly farther away, and in some sense, because it's so massive, it could have influenced the orbit of its partner that might have orbited farther away as well. And so basically that closer object might have actually been much farther away and possibly even a little bit more massive. Or it was a brown dwarf at a much wider separation, but because of the interaction with the more massive partner, it eventually came closer to the star, lost some of its mass because of the evaporation, and also acquired a little bit more eccentricity as a result, which are some of the things we're seeing from this object. And so maybe the system just had two brown dwarfs that were at some point created along with the star. But that's just of course one of the possible explanations. For all we know, this is just a big mystery that needs to be solved in some other study. Nevertheless, because of the current definitions for what a planet is, technically this object is still considered to be a planet, which would make it the strangest planet discovered in the last few years. But we'll probably talk more about all of this once more discoveries are made, or once the scientists actually figure out what's really going on here. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the show on Patreon by joining Jedi membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.